welcome, 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 always to our 26th day of this 30-day sunrise yoga series, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. Today's last, the, the last few days in this series, so from Thursday to next Wednesday, if you're doing this live, we're going to cover the power that is baked into our days. And we're going to use that as our through line as we play with poses that we've already learned and start to look at one of the lovely applications of yoga, which is feeling good and being willing to do the work to aggravate those, those uh, sh shadow feelings, thoughts, memories that might be covertly influencing behaviors or um, putting even putting shade on experiences that we're having because they're sitting there and we're not aware of them. So yoga is always going to be this megaphone for this doesn't work, but we can't find everything by doing the same thing each day. It is the diversity of movements. It is riding the breath that's going to make the difference. And that's what separates yoga from dance or yoga from fitness. Those can all be done in a vacuum. You can literally distance, dissociate yourself from what you're doing. Yoga asks for your whole being to be present. Your physical body, your mental, your, excuse me, from the left, your emotional body, your mental body, and your spiritual intuitive. Everything unites when we take these practices. And you showing up every morning is a commitment. Don't forget to recommit every day in your journal about why you started this 26 days ago. Um, everything that we're doing is a commitment to showing up in the world as our whole self. There's this book called, <coughs> in recovery rooms, called Drop the Rock. And so many people, about, so many of us are walking with rocks. We can put it down, but we don't know that we're holding it. And something like yoga is going to help us discover that. So congratulations to you for being here. Congratulations for you to be willing to upset, to change your life, because it's going to happen automatically just by your decision to come to the mat at morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time you're coming. Day 26 is dedicated to happens to be on a Saturday and Saturday in English is named after Saturn's day. So we had the Nordic gods. Those are Thursday and Friday and we've got some more Nordic gods coming up. One more um, coming up next week. And then now we're in the Roman gods. I don't know why we skipped the Greek gods, but say la vie. And Saturday is after Saturn and Saturn is luck and abundance and happenstance and serendipity. How many great things have happened to you on a Saturday only because you're outside of your normal routine? That's a perfect reflection of how yoga works in the world. And so we're going to look at poses, one of them which has repeated every day since we have looked at poses for power, fertility and joy and celebration. And then today we're looking at luck and abundance. And this one pose just keeps coming up because it's shown itself to be quite powerful and I really am enjoying playing with it. So we're gonna keep it on the roster. And we are going to do a somewhat awkward flow, but a flow nonetheless. So let's get started. Let's first ground ourselves, letting our body find itself. And now that we have created this habit, because we have passed the 21, 23 day mark of what it takes to do a habit, to create a habit, we've done something consistently for more than 21 or 23 days, then we'll let our body find its place its rootedness. Hands can come to heart. 
Hands can rest on the knees, wherever you want to be, eyes closed. Let's inhale. And exhale through the nose. Let's think about the commitment we made 26 days ago. Inhale. And let's exhale everything that we think hasn't served our journey. <sighs> let's inhale again. And exhale our idea that we know what's best for us because those things that we probably hated on this journey probably served us wonderfully. <sighs> Inhale one more time. Hands come back to prayer. And exhale through the mouth one more time. Letting the eyes float open, acknowledging today's commitment to luck and abundance. Let's be so grateful, even right now, because we have the wherewithal, the place, the time, the internet connection, the ability to do our five Tibetan rituals. Let's start with the Fountain of Youth. Check my radius. Okay, here we go. Feet flat on the ground, rooting into the ground, rooting to rise. When we root to rise, we feel that spiral coming up, 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 keeping us from not being straight. The spiral continues through our heart, rotating through our shoulders. And our two arms, shoulders are going to root into the shoulder cuffs, into the cuffs. And then our arms, continuing that spiral, stretch out. And our fingers, with a mild activation, stretch out and complete the line. Our head, obviously, because all parts of us are being pulled in these different directions, our head can also gracefully rise from the rest of our body with a semi-straight neck through the spine. And let's begin. Gaze is on the ground. Here goes. One. Two, three, four, five. Bring everything back together. Ooh, let the spin catch you, eyes close. And let's go to camel. Our feet and shins are pressing into the ground, our hands are providing this wonderful support for our lower back and for this entire movement. The shoulders are yearning to be towards each other. Excuse me, the elbows are yearning to be towards each other. The shoulders are tucked down, pinned towards the heart, and we're reaching through the spine on the first inhale, looking back or up. And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. There's five. Now we're at J. Okay, pinning the middle body towards the mat and supporting your lower back if you need it, I do. And working at your level, not mine, although our levels might be the same. Inhale, exhale, there's one. Inhale, exhale, two. Inhale, exhale, three. Inhale, exhale, four, inhale, exhale, five. Tabletop, fingers, first time we're using our protective grip, but anytime we use it, 
um, remember, anytime our, our hands are in contact with the ground, we're going to use it. Making an L with our hands, letting the other fingers fold out, unfold from that L, and keeping that palm, like we're palming a football or a basketball, keeping that palming feeling under our hands so that the hands are activated, helping build muscle in those hands and that protective uh, grip is going to protect our wrists and keep us from getting carpal tunnel syndrome by putting so much weight in our wrists that have no muscle without giving them any kind of support. We are supporting our wrists with this grip. Okay. Our elbows are doing the same thing, yearning to be towards each other. Our shoulders are pinning towards our heart. Our feet are a little less than hip width apart and our hands are a little more than hip width apart. Let's begin with tabletop. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. One, inhale. Exhale. Two, inhale. Exhale. Three, inhale. Exhale. Four, inhale. Exhale. Five. Our final pose, same cues for the hand. Going to upward facing dog, but doing whichever version is best for you. Any level of modification is welcome here. This is simply our warm up. Let's go. Inhale. Exhale. Downward facing dog. One. Inhale. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. And remember, you are on the 26th day. You have gathered strength. You have gathered flexibility as a result of showing up each day. And it builds little by little. So you may be here now. If you're doing day 26 and this is your first time seeing this, I would recommend that you start at day one where we break down all of these poses so that you can do them safely. So let's go right into our luck, our luck and abundance poses. They're really fun. Follow me. Um, you don't have to look at the screen. I will cue you verbally. Okay, we're going to start in child's pose and we're going to, oh, excuse me, in tabletop and we're going to push back to downward facing dog, thinking of the eyes at the elbow, facing the front side, the short front side of the mat, pushing back to downward facing dog. Let's reach up to three legged dog through our left heel, keeping our hips rotated towards the ground. I see. And bringing the knee through the center of the body, placing that foot between the two hands. We're going to spiral that right foot so that the knife's edge of that right foot is flat to the ground and we're putting weight strongly into the front left foot and the back right foot. And like we're starting a lawnmower, we're going to reach, 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 reach back to warrior two. Our first pose, acknowledging luck and abundance. And now from here, we're going to rise up, inhale to starfish. And here's the star of all of our poses because she keeps coming up. Go right into goddess pose. We're going to exhale and bend our feet, bring it a little bit tighter for goddess pose. Inhale, star. Exhale, bring everything back together. Wedge, 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 wedge. Bring your hands down. And we're going to start our climb to tree, pushing into that left foot, 
we're going to let tree pose come back. We haven't done tree pose in quite some time. I have arrived, I am home, leaving our foot right above the ankle and below the knee. I have arrived, I am home, placing or letting the foot make its way to the place pushing against the inner thigh above the knee. I have arrived, I am home, putting that foot in your pocket, that left foot goes, that right foot goes into the pocket of the left hip flexor, focusing on something that's entirely still to keep your balance. Growing our tree from here, I have arrived, I am home. You're welcome to keep your hands at prayer. You can take your prayer hands above the head. You can grow your tree through the backs of the hands to open your hands. And you can take your gaze towards the sky. And for a final level of challenge, you can close your eyes. But stop where you are because where you are safely is where you're meant to be today. I've arrived, I'm home. Bringing everything back down, going through each place as you unwrap the pose and bring it back to Tadasana. Wonderful. Bringing, coming down to our knees. I told you this was an awkward flow. Putting both hands on our lower back, we're going to reach up and back for camel. But this time we're going to take camel pose. And so you're going to actually flex. You're going to flip the toes towards the front of the mat so that the heels are in the sky. And we want to grab those heels, but we don't have to. We can also just reach for them and keep our hands on our back, supporting ourselves, really rooting into the things that are in contact with the ground, which are the tips of the toes and the knees reaching back, back, back. Mm. Feeling that when we are let, when we are guided by our heart, we're going to run into more love for sure, but sometimes our heart guidance is built on faulty maps. So if you find your heart guides you to things that don't serve you or your greatest good, re reconfigure that map that's built back up. Little by little, gracefully, never running out of a pose and never running into a pose. Bringing our seat to our heels, bringing the tops of our feet to the mat. Let's fold down into child's pose. Hmm. I've heard child's pose referred to as humble warrior. Hmm, humble warrior. And let's roll back up through the spine, turn our body around, and take the other side. Here goes. Starting at child's pose, we're going to put two hands in front because we were doing more like a yin child's pose. And we're going to push, and this is such a great place to acknowledge that grip. Are my fingers making an L? Are my fingers, are my, are my finger and point, my thumb and pointer finger making an L? Are my other fingers folding out from it? Am I gripping the ground so that my hands just not sitting there flat and flaccidly against the ground? Flaccid can't support anything. And then I have my elbows, the eyes of my elbows rotating towards the front of the mat, creating that tension that's going to be so supportive for my upper body. And then I'm going to flip my toes and push back to downward facing dog. Inhale here. Exhale. Right heel comes to the sky. Inhale. Three legged dog hips stay, hips stay rotated towards the ground. Exhale, 
The knee is going to come through the center of the body, and we're going to place that right foot between the two hands, grounding into our right foot, which is perpendicular to the short side of the mat, our toes pointing to the short side, our left foot is going to corkscrew down, spiral down, push into that back left foot, and we're going to come right into warrior two. Mm. Inhale here. Exhale. Inhale to starfish, rotating that left heel in towards the body. Our right and left toes are now pointing out. Our fingers are pointing out. And we're going to take it all down to the earth in such a powerful way. This time we'll take moon god. So our palms of our hands are going to face out away from us. Exhale into that bend. Inhale here. Exhale. Let's play a little bit, huh? We're here. Heels rise towards the sky. How do they rise? They push into the balls of the feet. Yes, 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 yes. I'm falling. <laughs> and let them rise down. Gracefully getting into the poses. As gracefully as we get out of the poses, come back to starfish, bring the whole body together to Tadasana, pushing into that right foot, pushing in strongly to that right foot. Our left foot is gonna kickstand against the heel. I've arrived, I am home. There's your tree. Bringing the left foot to that place between the knee and the ankle on the shin. Pushing with the left foot against that shin. I've arrived. I'm home. Bringing that left foot to push against that right inner thigh. The two pushing against each other makes that a balancing point of contact. I've arrived. I am home. And if you so desire, this is, you can take tree so many different ways. You can put your left foot into the right hip flexor. I've arrived. I'm home. You might have to hold it. It might stay. Mine does what it's going to do. I never know what day it's going to stay or not. Hands in prayer. Hands can stay on the hips. Hands can stay on either side of the body. Breathing through it all, hands can go into prayer. They can go into prayer overhead. You can grow your tree through the backs of the hands, feeling an activation and not a straightness through the fingers. Gaze can go up. Ah, just a light challenge. Oh, ah, I think I'll fall today. Yeah, yeah, okay, say la vie. And back to where I was. I think I'll stop actually with my left hand in the cuff of my right, with my left hand touching my right inner thigh. And unpack your tree the same way that you built it up. Going through each spot, each moment, and ending at Tadasana, coming to your knees for camel. When we do poses for the second and third and fourth and tenth times, we deepen them every time. We just can't help it. That's why repeating, especially poses that we're used to holding and never repeating, can be so nutritious for our practice and for our body. Inhale, we're, we're taking it back to camel. And remember that we're going to hold here. We're not just doing a repetition this time. Our front side body is pushing towards the front short side of the mat. Beautiful. Okay, let's build back up. 
just as elegantly and gracefully and slowly as we built into each pose, into camel. Come to your knees, bring your seat to, excuse me, come to seated, bring your seat to your heels. And we're gonna fold our body forward for that passive child's pose again. This is a counter pose to camel. Notice that we're doing the yin version and not the more active child's pose. We really want to support that lower back, which did a lot of work in camel. And now that you have learned, you've, you've come into communion with these beautiful poses dedicated to luck and wealth and notice that what's happening each time is that our hearts opening more and more um, for these kinds of poses dedicated to these this theme we're going to end today with by spending a little bit of time in silence and stillness with the kubera mudra the kubera mudra is dedicated to luck and abundance and material wealth so if you ever find yourself feeling insecure, desperation is going to repel what we want. It's repulsive. Um, so instead, you can go to stillness. You can go to a neutral place and you can take this mudra. For the Kubera mudra, our two fingers are going to, our two fingers are going to pointer. So finger and middle finger are going to come in contact with thumb and our two other fingers are going to curl in and our palms are going to face down. There's Kubera Mudra. Okay. We're going to take Kubera Mudra and we're going to use the last few minutes of the time that we take each day for this series. And we're going to give it to this Mudra. So we've got our hands We've got our palms facing up. We've got our, we're seated, rooted. And let the mudra do the work. Don't have a, don't try to pick up a thought or pick up a certain theme. Things will come. Let the mudra do the work. Pressing lightly, not strongly, lightly between the thumb and those two fingers. Letting the eyes float closed if they're not already. Gently letting the eyes float open. 
letting the hands float away, letting the thumbs float away from the fingers, letting the hands open up, letting the grounding, the different, very different kind of grounding that we've experienced through taking that mudra be our, our place of settlement for the poses and the work that we did today. Allowing the different kind of, it's definitely not a shavasana, but allowing that different thing to be enough. Exploring difference, taking things a different way. Don't worry, Shavasana will be back tomorrow. Think of what might have come up, write it down in your journal. And it might not, it may not show up right now. It may show up as an inner knowing. It may bloom as an inner knowing five hours from now in your dreams. If you're doing this at night, But just know that we have so many ways to avoid hiding from ourselves. And if luck and wealth is something you struggle with, this mudra may be a consideration, something to do on a daily basis to help uncover the obstacle that might be in your way. Thank you for joining me today. I wish you joy, ease, space, and grace. You've completed your 26th day of the Sunrise Yoga series, Unleashing the Magic of Yoga. Satnam Namaste.